directly in line with the national polling average. It shows Mrs. Clinton with a four-point lead in a two-way race, as you can see, and a four-point uh, lead in a four-way race. Let's get some thoughts now on the polling from Scott Jennings, who did political analysis for the George W. Bush White House. Scott, welcome. Nice to have you with me here. Good evening. Um, your thoughts tonight on what you're seeing. Well, we're seeing the national polling averages come in line with each other. All the tracking polls say the Investor's Business Daily and the USC poll, which we've talked about before, have come in line to show a three to four point lead for Hillary Clinton. There's some belief that maybe there's herding going on where pollsters try to get together at the end so nobody's a true outlier, but it looks like she's got a bit of a lead in the national tracking. The question is whether that lead is carrying over to the states which sometimes lag the national tracking. We are seeing some state polls that look a little different than the national polls. Right, well, the, and, the, and the map that Shannon uh, just outlined for us shows Mrs. Clinton, with, if everything holds it as it appears, with just four votes more than she'd need to be elected. That's the lowest total I think we've had on our map in some time, if not, if not since we started doing it. So that is a distinctly different picture than we're seeing with the national polls. And that's right, and a couple of states are on a knife's edge. Florida is a, cheer, a true toss-up. North Carolina, a true toss-up in the last polling there. We've even seen some polls out of Pennsylvania tonight showing Trump with a two-point lead. Two surveys came out tonight showing Trump up with a two-point lead in both of them. So we've got several states that are on a knife's edge. She's ahead right now, but if you lose any one of them, now you're back down below 270, and you've got to start winning some of the pure toss-ups on the map. Let's talk a little bit about Pennsylvania, because it's been kind of a garden of dying hopes for Republican presidential candidates in the past. When there's, There seems to be late movement in the Republican direction. This has happened cycle after cycle, it seems to me. And the candidate goes in, right, rushes in, sets up an event, campaigns a bit. Uh, leaves with some optimism, and then on election day, it all gets crushed. What do you th do? You, do you think there's any reason to doubt that will happen again this time? Clearly, there has been some tightening because both campaigns have spent time and money there late. It's part of her firewall. If she wins it, along with North Carolina and Florida, this race is over. If he wins it, he's still in business. Maybe not quite over the top, but winning it does definitely open up a lot of doors for him. I do think it's tighter uh, than people thought it would be. Yeah, we're uh, just looking at the average here now, Scott, and it shows less than a two-point lead for Mrs. Clinton. That's the average of all the current polls. So. That does look, that does look uh, pretty, pretty close. And this is one of those states without early voting, so it's hard to read the tea leaves here like we can in Nevada right. or Florida or some, some other states. Right. Now, let's talk a little bit about Mr. Trump's uh, day. He was in Michigan, uh, 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 will be in Michigan tonight. Uh, Michigan is, what is it, 1988, 28 years ago since it last went Republican? That's, that's, that's quite a challenge, I would think. But he's going to need it for him to win. He's got to, as you point out, he's got to, or as Shannon has pointed out, we've talked about this, he's got to run the table of the states that, uh, that Romney won. He's got, to, he's got to win the toss-ups, and that still leaves him short. So someplace like Michigan or Pennsylvania, he has to have. Yeah, the three states are Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin. One of those three comes his way, then he's definitely got to pat the 270. If he wins everything that's on the board on the map right now, he's still short. Those three states have the demographics that seem to lean toward his candidacy more than other states uh, in the southern uh, part of the United States, Arizona, Florida, uh, for instance. So Ohio is trending Republican. Michigan's a lot like Ohio. Uh, if he can flip Ohio, which looks likely tonight, uh, then there is some belief there that he could do it in Michigan. And they're looking at absentee data in Michigan. Absentee voting is up, but it's down in the city of Detroit, where you have a lot of traditional uh, Democrat votes uh, in the African-American community. So I don't know that it's polling as much as gut feel, demographics, and absentee data that says that the Trump campaign, this might be a place. You know, I must say, I, I've been on a lot of presidential campaigns, and it is customary at the end to see big crowds, even for candidates who are way behind. I remember being with Walter Mondale in 1984 at the end, and we had these enormous crowds, and it certainly put a, a little spring in his step, although I don't think he ever really believed he was going to win. Trump's a little different in the sense that he's had these, these enormous crowds throughout, going back into the primary season. He plays with these enormous crowds. Scott, in your experience, you, can you think of a time when a candidate has had this, this kind of crowd attention and admiration uh, when it didn't end up meaning anything in the end? Uh, he has had big crowds. I was standing on stage in Westchester, Ohio in 2012, right at the end of the race when Mitt Romney had 30-something thousand people at a Kid Rock concert, and it felt there for a few hours like, how could you lose? And big right. crowds uh, do give energy to a campaign, but they don't necessarily translate into winning. Losing campaigns frequently have large crowds, so uh, I would trust the polling and the data analytics more than the crowd sizes. 
but truly he does have a committed base and that's why we've seen him weather some of the storms like the tape for instance he never really dipped that low because his committed core supporters the ones at the rallies keep showing up now let's talk just a little bit about tomorrow night so i'm an ordinary guy i'm sitting at home i'm turning on the television i'm interested um, polls are starting to close across the country. Where should I be looking most of all? First is Florida. If he wins Florida, Trump wins Florida, he's in business. If Hillary Clinton wins Florida, it's an early night. Then North Carolina, if uh, Donald Trump wins North Carolina, still in business. If she wins it, real long road for Donald Trump. Then Ohio, the one we think he's going to flip. If he flips it in business, Iowa, we think he's going to flip that one as well. Early on in the evening, you will see a couple of red states fall. Kentucky and Indiana will likely go first, right. uh, and we'll see those go, go to, to Trump. Yeah. We'll go to Trump right out of the gate. But Florida's the one. If she holds him off in Florida, it's over early. All right, Scott. Good to have you. Thanks for all you all of your appearances. You've made here. Thanks, Britt. Great honor. help to us. Donald Trump's final day on the campaign found him racing.